The last few months I've been hard at work to make the software for my device a lot better. So it's about time for a little update video to talk about the progress that has been made. Unfortunately I couldn't get everything to work perfectly, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's first talk hardware. The previous design couldn't implement future features like compatibility with a wireless adapter. This is because of the placement of the USB port. So I made a new hardware design that makes stuff like that possible. On this new PCB I also added a button for user input and a LED to show the current status of the system. Along with this new PCB I also made a little casing that consists of two pieces. And these two pieces are then screwed together from the back. Now onto the software. I've been focusing a lot of time and effort towards synchronization. With the previous version it was very simple and straightforward. There was no communication between the two games until it was absolutely necessary. But with this new and improved version I wanted every step of the way to be synchronized. Getting into the trading room, sending the Pokemon data, choosing the Pokemon and finishing the trade at the end. And here we unfortunately arrive at our first problem. Synchronizing the Pokemon data in one go. But what does this mean? Let me explain the problem. Let's start with Gen 3. Gen 3 sent its data in chunks of 200 bytes. That means that two Pokemon are sent at a time. And this is done a total of three times in order to send all the data in your party. But before you can receive the next two Pokemon, you will first have to supply two Pokemon of yourself. Meaning that you can't receive all six Pokemon without supplying Pokemon yourself. Now normally this is not an issue. But when you're trying to communicate with Gen 2, then it is. The structure of a Gen 2 Pokemon is a bit different. The main structure does not contain the nickname and the name of the original trainer, so they are sent separately afterwards. So first the game will send its main data of all 6 Pokemon, then send the name of the original trainer of all 6 Pokemon, and lastly the nicknames. So normally both games transmit their data at the same time, but for Gen 3 I have to wait. Let's look at the entire transmission again to fully understand our problem. First I can receive 2 Pokemon from Gen 3 and I can stall the Gen 3 games by not sending my data yet. Now for Gen 2. Since a Pokemon is sent in 3 sections, I only have enough data for Gen 3 once I have received at least 2 nicknames from the last section. And after that we can continue our transmission with Gen 3. But now here comes our problem. When we were receiving the Gen 2 data, I only had 2 Gen 3 Pokemon. But since the Pokemon is sent in 3 sections in Gen 2, I can't send my data yet because I don't know what other 4 Pokemon Gen 3 has. Now it is possible to stall Gen 2. But once the Gen 2 game has finished sending its data, it will stop receiving data as well. Meaning that I cannot finish my Gen 2 transmission. So how did I solve this issue? I simply need to send placeholder data to both games, telling the player to cancel the trade and try again. Now the second time around my device knows what both games will send and can convert the data accordingly between the generations. This was the only thing I wasn't able to get perfect, but I still plan to work on it more in the future. Like analyzing the code in the game more to see what other things are possible, using the wireless adapter, or making a multi-boot with custom code. Eventually I'll get it perfect, but for now I'm happy with how it works. Next we'll talk more about the conversion of the Pokemon. I've made some minor changes for Gen 2 to a Gen 3 Pokemon. First, the game of origin is changed back to Fire Red instead of our own custom value. This will make the Pokemon appear as if it is from Kanto. The previous value showed up as a bunch of question marks in Gen 4. I've also made the generation of the personality value pseudo random with the DVs as a seed. This will make sure the personality value will be the same each time it's transferred between the two games. Next up, let's talk Gen 3 to Gen 2. There are two ways to convert a Gen 3 Pokemon to Gen 2. One is preserving the stats of the Pokemon, and the other is preserving stuff like gender, the known letter and shininess. This is because both of these options are based on the DVs. I've made it possible to switch between the two by pressing the button. Green is preserving the stats, and yellow is preserving the likeness of the Pokemon. Those were all the little changes I made in the conversion of the Pokemon. Next let's answer the most asked question in the previous video. What happens when you send a Pokemon introduced in Gen 3 to Gen 2? Currently I programmed to make them appear as a Ditto, because Ditto can transform into anything. If I don't do this, then the value will simply overflow in Gen 2 and choose a Pokemon based on the index used in Gen 3. Besides this, all Gen 3 moves and non-convertible items are deleted. 
let's continue to the next question. Are these Pokemon able to be transferred all the way to Pokemon Home? Let's find out together. I have 6 Pokemon here in Gen 2 and let's see what happens when we try to transfer them all the way to Pokemon Home. First we need to get them to Gen 3 and trading them there was no issue at all. But in order to send them to Gen 4 we will need to delete some HMs. After that however they are able to be transferred to Gen 4 via Pal Park and they are all yours once you've caught them all. Next up is Gen 5. To transfer them we need to go to the Poke Transfer Lab on Round 15. There we can use DS Download Play to transfer over the Pokemon by playing a fun minigame. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Will they be accepted into Pokemon Bank? Eh, most of them. The journey for our Fisherman Champ however ends here. Everyone else is accepted and are also able to be transferred over to Pokemon Home. Now for the other most asked question. Will you sell the device? Currently for my own version I'm extremely happy with it. And I personally don't mind having to send my data twice in the beginning. I just want to send over my Pokemon from Gen 2 to Gen 3. But for a version that is released, I think it is important to have the data sent in one go. Besides that I need to develop a way to update the device in the future. So I want to work on those last things before it's ready. With that being said we've reached the end of this video. But there's one last thing I would like to share with you. What you are looking at right now is a custom GBA ROM I made to communicate directly with the Gen 2 games. In our last video we ended on the note that it might be possible to communicate directly with Gen 2 if we used the original link cable. The question was however if it is possible to match the protocol used in the Gen 2 trade. I decided to try this out and make a direct connection between the two. Proving that it is possible to have them directly communicate with each other. But we'll talk more about this in a future video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.